Mildred Old Crow was born on May 3rd, 2012 in Billings, Montana. She was a member of the Crow tribe and the direct descendant of Crow chiefs like Chief Old Crow and Chief Pretty Eagle, the warrior chief who was instrumental in fighting for Crow's rights in the late 1900s. He was known for his prowess and for his devotion to his people, and Mildred would be able to trace her direct relation to him through an ancestry line that stemmed from one of the 19 wives he'd had during his lifetime. This also left her with a huge number of relatives, but she wasn't just the direct descendant of chiefs. Mildred was also a direct descendant of White Arm, a member of the Crow tribe who would play a huge role in the preservation of Crow culture and history. He was the artist and creator behind some of the Crow Nation's most iconic artwork, where he would depict scenes from everyday Crow life, like the people, their clothes and their traditional headpieces and jewellery, as well as cowboys that the tribe would come into contact with. He would even spend the time to detail the differences between other cowboys and Mexican cowboys in some of his artwork that we still have to this day. And it's through him and his work that we're able to catch a glimpse of what life was like for the Crow tribe back in the year 1889. And it's perhaps from him that Mildred got some of her creativity. Mildred, or Millie as she was more affectionately known amongst family and friends, loved to dance and she adored singing, especially songs that revolved around the traditional Native American game called Hand Game. In Hand Game, two teams will sit opposite each other and both will be given ten sticks or bones. From there, it will differ between tribes, but these sticks will almost always consist of plain ones and ones with carvings or patterns painted on them. The object of the game is for the guessing team to guess which order the two chosen members of the hiding team are holding their four sticks in behind their backs. For every guess they get wrong, the guessing team will have to hand over one of their sticks and the hiding team will do their best to make sure that the guessing isn't easy. The remaining members of the hiding team will try to distract the guessing team by singing songs and playing on traditional instruments like the drum and the rattle, but if the guessing team does guess correctly, the hiding team will have to hand over their four sticks and the game goes on until one team has collected all 20. And Millie was an avid hand game player, and perhaps in some ways she didn't have a choice with her family being an integral part of the regulators hand game team, but she loved it and would always enjoy the music and spending time with her family. And her family loved her. They considered Millie to be a loving, respectful little girl who was outgoing and compassionate. She, like so many children then and now, loved the film Frozen and would often dress up and pretend to be Elsa, but behind the scenes there were problems in her home life. Millie's father died when she was very young, leaving her in the care of her mother and the rest of their family, but by 2017 Mildred was actually in the care of her aunt. This was not a formal or judicial decision, so to speak, but rather a decision made by the Crow Tribal Court in the interests of keeping Millie out of the system and within her family, while these problems within her home life were ironed out. 
Millie was only five years old when she went to live with her aunt, Rosine Lincoln Old Crow, and her wife, Veronica Tirza Dust. But in November of 2020, Millie was reported missing by other members of the family, who said they had not seen the little girl since July of 2018. Both the Bureau of Indian Affairs at Crow Agency and local authorities would open statewide investigations into the missing girl, determining that she had been seen by a reliable witness in March of 2019, but that no one had seen her since. Both Rosine and Veronica were asked to bring Mildred in, or at least provide proof that the girl was still alive, but... They didn't, and in just a month, both of these women would be arrested and Mildred's body would tragically be found. Both Rosine and Veronica had been on the run in Billings after the Crow tribe had issued warrants for their arrests for not producing Mildred or providing any evidence that she was alive. But after that, things moved quickly and they were actually found and arrested within a week of Millie's body being discovered. Millie was found by a camper on the reservation near Gary Owen, a discovery that shocked the community as well as her remaining family and friends. But Rosine and Veronica were not actually charged with her murder. In fact, authorities would never issue an official statement saying how Mildred Old Crow had actually died, but Rosine and Veronica were charged with endangering the welfare of a child. And already in January, the two were tried and found guilty of these charges, and then for custodial interference, which is when a parent or guardian directly goes against court-determined custodial instructions. The duo were both sentenced to 18 months in prison and ordered to pay a mere $2,000 fine. But Mildred's death would have a huge impact on the Crow community. After the arrests of Rosine and Veronica, tribal chairman Frank Whiteclay had this to say in an interview with NCME, quote, Our hearts ache for the family and I lift them up in prayer. The entire community felt the loss when Mildred went missing and we feel it again today. My hope is that we can find closure, grieve together, and work to ensure that children are protected and supported on the Crow Reservation and beyond. We want justice for this child and for all the victims of the epidemic of people missing from reservations across the country. But we may never know exactly what happened to Mildred Old Crow and why the life of someone so young and innocent was cut so short whilst in the custody of those who were supposed to protect her. She leaves a large grieving family behind her who in turn are left with only the memories of the girl who loved to dance and sing and had all the makings of a bright future both for herself, her culture and her community. Thank you.